Good day. Today I'm going to show you how to remotely access your personal CoReady Containers OpenShift cluster. To set the context, I'd like to answer two questions first. Question one, what is CoReady Containers? And question two, why do I need remote access? When you want to install an OpenShift 4 environment for whatever purpose, for learning, for uh, production, development, for experimentation, there are a number of approaches that you can take. The first approach is to use installer provisioned infrastructure or IPI to create an OpenShift cluster on either AWS or Azure. You will end up with five AWS EC2 instances, three masters and two workers, plus a bootstrap EC2 instance during installation. Another approach is to use user provisioned infrastructure or UPI to install OpenShift 4 on VMs or bare metal. Again, you will end up with three masters and two workers, i.e. five VMs. And during installation, you will also require an additional bootstrap VM. You can imagine that uh, the cost for setting this up is quite high if you're just using it for learning and experimentation. For those who are familiar with OpenShift 3, you will remember that there are two other approaches to install an all-in-one OpenShift cluster on your laptop or desktop. The two approaches were OC cluster up, which uses a container-based approach, and the second one is CDK, Container Development Kit, which gives you mini-shift as the environment, which is a VM-based solution. Unfortunately, those two options are no longer available in OpenShift 4. In its space, we have CoReady containers, which you can install, use it to install an environment, OpenShift 4 environment on your laptop or desktop. It's based on VMs. The next question you will ask is, now that I know that I can install the, an all-in-one OpenShift cluster using CoReady containers on my laptop, why do I need remote access? That is a very good question. Let me just give you a few reasons for doing that. First reason, your laptop does not have enough memory or CPU power to give you the desired performance. Give you an example. My laptop is a MacBook. It has 16 gig of memory and two CPUs uh, supporting hyper-threading. I assigned 8 gigabytes of memory to CoReady containers. And I run an application on it for demo purposes. It consists of 20 containers. What I find is I'm experiencing sporadic performance. Sometimes it uh, works reasonably well, but sometimes it's really, really slow, which is something you cannot afford if you're going to do a demo on it. The second reason is that you may want to keep your environment running and doing work, and you don't want to tie up your notebook on it. So what kind of workload am I talking about? For example, you are training a deep learning model on OpenShift. Right? That you don't want it to be running all the time on your notebook because you may use your notebook or something else. And because of the uh, memory uh, shortage, you may impact the performance of your notebook as well. Third reason is that you may have a server at home which has a lot of memory. Then you want to install CoReady container and your uh, OpenShift application on it and then use your laptop as OC client to interact with the OpenShift uh, cluster uh, running on your uh, remote server. 
And the last reason is that we remember that uh, you require five VMs or five EC2 instances to run a proper OpenShift cluster, which is quite expensive. Uh, it may not be feasible if just using it as a demo system. Then you can install Kubernetes ready container on, on an AWS CC2 instance. But remember, you need that instance to support, must have support for nested virtualization. Let me just show you my use case. What I want to do is, I want to set up OpenShift and run OpenShift application on the server. And then I want to interact with the server from my laptop using OC client and using the browser to access the OpenShift console. The solution I, that I come up with is this. I installed Kubernetes containers on the server. I also installed Tiny Proxy, which is a lightweight HTTP, HTTPS proxy. I use it to proxy all my requests from my laptop on port 6443 and 443 to the corresponding ports on the server. As you remember, port 6443 is for uh, you to interact with uh, the OpenShift environment using command line interface. That is, you can log into the server use the OC client and interact with it. Port 443 is for accessing the uh, OpenShift console. And on top of that, I want to protect my connection between my laptop and tiny proxy using a SSH tunnel. Creating the tunnel itself is very simple. All you need to do is to run this SSH command. This is using port forwarding. So all this command is saying is that I want to make connect. I want to forward all the traffic from my local host or laptops port 8888 to the servers port 8888. Second thing is I want to log into OpenShift using the OC command. And before I can do that, I have to export an environment variable, a variable telling it uh, where the HTTPS proxy is. And I point it to my laptop's port 8888, and then I can log in. To access my OpenShift console from the laptop, first of all, I have to configure the browser's proxy setting. Once I configure that, I can just point the browser to the Kubernetes containers OpenShift console using this URL. Now it's time for a demo. I want to create a tunnel. So I put it in a shell script. I want to make it easier to use. And then from here, so what I need to do is I to set up this environment variable and then I can log into OpenShift. So I got two projects there so I can interact with it using OC commands. I'm on project Kafka, I look at it and it has this number of posts running. In order to interact with the console, OpenShift console, first of all, I have to configure the proxy settings. So you can see that I'm pointing the HTTP and the HTTPS or SSL proxy to the local host, which is my laptop, a MacBook, to port 8888, right? I already configured it. So now I can interact with it by just pointing to the URL. Yes. When I go to networking, look at this particular application's uh, root. I can click on it, 
and interact with uh, the application itself. And that's it for the demo. So I've shown you how you can use Tiny Proxy and uh, uh, SSH Tunnel to actually interact with the OpenShift running on your remote server from your laptop. The setup itself is not difficult. I put all the details in an article which is published on my blog. I've included a link to point to that article. You can go through it and then uh, find out exactly how to configure the tiny proxy. And also I have a link in there as well to show you how to actually set up the cold container on your laptop or desktop. Thank you for watching.